Hi, this is Barbara Bunsey. I was thrilled when Lori asked me to join the design team here at Tull Town, and I'm really excited to be here with you. Since spring is upon us, I thought I would show you how to do a quick and easy floral design using strokes. Now, please don't get scared away. Your strokes do not have to be perfect for this design. And also, even though I've given you a pattern to create this design, I would really like to encourage you to be creative and use these flowers to create your own design. They work up very quickly, and you can create a quick hostess gift, a memory box, a gift of any kind, or just a special gift for yourself. My design is done on a paper mache box, but I'm going to demo on some watercolor paper just to show you how easy it is to just add some flowers here and there where you need them. The box is base coated with DecoArt Purple Rain. I chose this color because it was the closest I could find that, that matches the 2018 Pantone color of the year. I wanted to add a little bit interest to the background, so I added a stencil. What I used is um, Paisley Delight stencil, and I know I should be cleaning these, so I apologize for that, uh, which is available at Artist Club. I used a um, Black Gold Dynasty dry brush. This happens to be a number 12. And some Deco Art Wild Orchid paint. I'm loading my brush in the Wild Orchid. And then I'm scrubbing a lot of it out on my palette. When you're doing the stencil, you don't want a whole lot of paint in your brush. Just want a little bit. And I would rather pick up, take out more paint and have to add more than go the other way because it's hard to remove that dried paint. Also, you don't want the paint to go underneath the stencil. And if it's too wet, too much paint, it's going to seep under the stencil and you won't have nice clean lines. And then I just laid my stencil down on the box and found a design that I liked. In fact, I think I used a couple different designs. I'm just going to lay it down here just so you can see. Here's the paint on my brush. You're just going to hold it in place and tap straight up and down until you get whatever area of the design, the stencil that you want on your surface. I'm going to pick up just a tad more paint in my brush, take out the excess, and finish up. You can see I didn't take out as much, so it's going to be brighter on that edge, but that's okay. I like a little bit of variation in color as well. When you've got all your stenciling done, you just lift up your stencil and you're done. Make sure you do wash out that brush because the dry paint is going to dry in that brush and ruin it for you. On my surface, I decided this was a little too bright. I did take a little bit of the Purple Rain, which was my base color, thinned it down with water, and I just washed it on top of that stencil just to tone it down a little bit. The next thing I did was add a little bit of texture behind my bouquet. A little extra greenery, kind of look like some background leaves, etc., foliage that's um, lingering back there, and to give a little bit more of a base to my design. In order to do that, <clears throat> I'm using a small sea sponge, which I actually have soaking in my water tub right now. And let me just say, it's called a small sea sponge because it has these really tiny holes in it. I'm sorry, I don't know what those are called. Not the size of the sponge, but the size of the holes in the sponge. Sometimes people get confused with that. Again, I had this soaking in my water tub and I'm squeezing out as much water as I possibly can. And I am starting out with DecoArt Avocado Paint. I'm creating a little pad for myself. I'm picking up some paint on that part of my sponge and I am tapping it out on my palette. Tap, 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 tap until it starts to look kind of misty. You can kind of see that's really thin and a really pretty design there. Then I'm going to come over to my surface, which is right in here, and I always start in the center of the area I'm working on. Tap, tap, tap. 
And as I come to the outside, I'm losing some paint, which is what I want. I want it to fade into the background. And I'm also using a little bit less pressure. After I get that color on, I'm coming back to my palette. This time I'm picking up Deco Art Antique Green. And I can use the same area of my sponge, picking up the paint. Once again, tapping it on my palette until I get more of a misty look to it. Again, I'm starting in the center of the area. I'm not covering up all the avocado. I want some of that to show through. So I'm using a little bit less pressure with this color. That's fine. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Avocado Dip by Deco Art. Once again, tap, tap, tap on my palette to get the excess paint out. Once again, I'm starting in the center of the area. Oh, that's a little too much. Coming back to my palette, tapping out more. Start in the center of my area again and tapping that color in. Then one last time I'm picking up a little bit of antique white in my sponge. Tap that out. And for this step, I just added a little bit of highlight here and there on this background area. Once this is totally dry, you can either trace on your pattern or you can do what I do is to draw some ovals on my surface for my flowers. I just draw some ovals for the daisies. That's the daisy center and I'm doing the same thing for the Black Eyed Susan. And I will show you what to do next. Okay. I, don't know. I wanted all the colors on this piece to go with each other so I did do a little bit of brush mixing to get a color that I liked. I don't have proportions for the mix that I used on the daisy petals. I just mixed some colors together. The main colors should be the largest proportion and then add the other colors to your liking. So for my daisies, I use DecoArt Antique White, DecoArt Bubblegum, and DecoArt True Ochre. You need to use whatever brush you're most comfortable with to make some comma strokes. I am using a Joe Sonia Short Liner number no. 6. It's one of my favorite brushes to use for doing comma strokes. Um, if you're working on a surface, a smaller surface, like I did here on this box, I did use the number 6 liner. However, you could probably go in with a number 2 or 3 round if you're more comfortable with that and get the same results. Loading my brush in my water. I'm just going to gently lay it down on my paper towel to take the excess water out of it. Then I'm pulling a little bit of my antique white out, picking up a little bit of the bubblegum pink on corner of my brush and some true ochre on my brush. So again, I'm just mixing all these colors together with my brush. I'm pulling more antique white as you can see because I want my daisy petals to be a little bit whiter, but I do have those underlying colors of the pink and the, the true ochre in there. I'm going to clean my brush out now just to get all that excess paint out. You can't do good strokes at all with too much paint in your brush. So I'm going to load again my brush in my paint and take a little bit more moisture out. It's a little bit too too thin. There we go. First I'm going to show you how to do the daisy that is standing straight up like this one right here. I start again as I said with with an oval and I put that in with a chalk pencil probably have that or you can use chalk whatever whatever you have just draw yourself an oval that's going to be the center of that daisy I'm starting at the top center and I'm pulling in just one straight comma stroke again you don't need to worry about how pretty they are you're pulling the tail into the center and the center is going to cover it up 
Then I'm going to start on one side. I'm starting more or less down, curve up, pull into the center. This stroke is a little longer than the last one I put in. My next stroke is a little bit longer. Pull up into the center. Once again, down, curve up into the center. And I just keep filling around till I get to about this bottom center. And here I'm going to pull one straight stroke right up into the center. Each of these strokes get a little bit longer. Let's make these a little longer than the one I did before it. On the opposite side of the daisy, I'm going to pull the same way but in the opposite direction. So kind of start down, curve up, pull into the center, down, up, into the center. Once again, until I get that whole area filled in. To do the daisies that look like they're kind of leaning to the side, which is what I've done here, I'm using the same color mix. Once again, I'm starting at the top center of my oval, pulling a straight comma stroke down. This time I'm curving these strokes the opposite direction. But I am making them all a little bit longer, each one, as I pull around until I get to about the bottom of that oval. And that's where I'm stopping. I'm going to continue on this side and pull more strokes again till I get to the bottom of that center oval. We're going to move over to this daisy here. I've already got all those strokes in. And we're going to put the center in with Deco Art True Ochre. And I'm using a filbert brush. I like to use this because, again, I'm using and doing an oval. And the filbert brush has the nice rounded tips on it. So I've already wet my brush and blotted it on my paper towel. I'm loading it flat from the side of the puddle with the true ochre. And all I need to do is pull two strokes to complete that oval. I'm going to do that on both of the kinds of daisies that I'm doing, the straight up one and the cupped one. Again, in two strokes, I have that done. You're probably going to need more than one coat, depending on the color you're using, um, how much water you have in your brush. Two or three coats, however, should get that done for you. And again, you can see just one stroke one direction, one stroke the other direction, and I'm finished. Now that we have the center in on this cupped daisy, we're going to add the bottom petals to it. I'm loading again into that color mix the antique white, the bubblegum pink, the true ochre that we mixed up before. And I'm going to add two strokes in one direction under the cup, or, or I'm sorry, under the center, and one coming in this direction. It really doesn't matter which you could put two strokes here and one here. It really doesn't make any difference. It's just that you want two in one direction again and one in the opposite direction. Okay, we need to add some highlights and shading to all of these petals. So I am going to use my shader brush in DecoArt Warm White, picking up a corner of paint on that brush and coming over to my palette and blending. One thing I always like to tell people is I blend back and forth on the same path. If you blend and jump all over your palette, you're wasting paint and water. If you keep blending on the same path, you just keep adding that paint and water back into your brush. I'm going to come to each petal and add a little highlight to each tip of every single petal. is on both of the daisies, either the cupped one or the one that's standing up. I'm going to leave these bottom petals go right now because they might still be wet. So I'm going to add 
my highlight to this daisy here. Again, you can see that I am just adding it to the tip. One thing you might notice is that rather than just pulling it straight across and letting it go, I'm working that color in and walking it down into the daisy petal. So it's not just on the tip of the daisy petal, it's working its way down in as well. I think it just gives it a much softer look when I do that. And this white really helps to brighten up the daisy, so if you were worried your petals were not white enough, walk the color down even a little bit more, and that will brighten them up for you. Almost finished with this one. And then we're going to go over to the petals that we put on last for that cupped daisy. Just picking up more paint in my brush. And the same thing, just adding it to the tops of each of those petals. I clean my brush out. My first shadow color that I'm going to put on is going to be Decoir Wild Orchid, which is the color we use to do the stencil on the background. Again, picking up in a corner of the brush, blending it back and forth on my palette on that same path. And I'm going to add this right next to that center of the daisy. Now, even though you have the background probably showing through here, I just want to remind you to stroke it on each single petal. Rather than pull it straight around, it keeps it much softer looking. Once again, you might see that I'm, rather than just putting my brush down and putting it right next to the center, I'm working that color up into the rest of the petal. So it's not just a line next to the center. It's just going to help to soften out that shadow color for you. I'm just going to finish up this one here. And we're doing the exact same thing to this daisy with the cupped petals. When I come down to these bottom ones, I'm just going to add a little bit of that shadow to the tail ends of those petals. Just like that. Again, working that color up toward the white highlight. Once that's dry, I I'm going to add a little bit more shadow to it. I wanted to tone them down just a little bit because this was just way too bright for me. I'm going in with a mix of approximately one part of Purple Rain to two parts of um, Antique Green and mix those colors together. Once again, picking up color on a corner of the brush, blending it out real well. This is going to go on top of the wild orchid and I'm working it up but not quite as far as I did the wild orchid. You don't want to totally cover up the wild orchid. You want these colors to kind of blend together. And working my way all the way around. Same thing you're going to do on the cupped daisy and you're adding this also on the bottoms or the tail ends, I should say, of those petals at the bottom. Once you have all that done and you're happy with the way it looks, you can start adding your highlights onto the centers of your flowers. We're going to start by loading in Antique White. Side load and blend. And this is going to go to the top of each of those centers. Clean my brush out. I'm going to pick up some warm white because I think that needs to be a little bit brighter. If you like it that way, that's fine. But if not, pick up a tiny bit of warm white in your brush and you're going to add a little bit of warm white right on top of that antique white. Again, not totally covering it up. Then to add a shadow, I again did a brush mix of two parts purple rain to one part true ochre. 
again a side load and blend and that's going to go down on the very bottom of the center. Then just to soften the daisy up, add some of those little pollen dots that you see on, on a daisy. I'm using my liner brush. I'm picking up true ochre and I'm tapping some on the center and letting them spill out onto the petals. I'm going to pick up a little bit of antique white and do the same. And the same thing with warm white. I like to use a liner brush rather than a stylus because I don't want perfect little circles. And again, if you spill it out onto the center, you can see my little dots are spilled out onto the petals and onto the background. Again, I like using my liner brush rather than the stylus. The stylus would give me perfect circles, and I don't want that. You wouldn't see perfect circles on a flower in nature. So I want it to look a little bit more natural. Okay, we're going to start working on our Black Eyed Susans over here. Once again, I'm starting with an oval using my Josanya number 6 brush. I'm loading in DecoArt True Ochre. I'm basically doing the same thing, only in reverse, if you will. I'm going to start my stroke this time inside the center. So I'm going to start in here, and I'm going to pull one straight stroke straight up. And I'm going to come around my oval, again, starting in the center and pulling my strokes out each one getting, again, a little bit longer than the one I last put on until I get to the center and pull my straight stroke. And then I'm going to come around the opposite side again as we did before. This is not the best angle for me, so please bear with me but you get the idea of what I'm doing. You can turn your work. Don't be afraid to turn your work. That's important. You want to get nice, nice looking strokes. I'm just going to add a couple more in here. You want to get nice looking strokes. So just don't, don't again, be afraid to turn your work. I always like to put my centers in next because I think just think it makes it easier to do my shading. So we're going to come over here. Oh, I should say also, if um, you think that you need to put a second coat on these, go ahead and do that. If you think that there's too much purple showing through, you certainly can do that. Just stroke right on top of what you just did. Okay, so to put these my center in, I am using an FM Black Gold Dynasty Dry Brush. In this case, I'm using a number four. If you're working on a smaller surface like my little paper mache box, you might want to use a number two or three round brush dry. You want to load it dry. I'm coming into a mix I made here of about equal parts of DecoArt Purple Rain and DecoArt Avocado and taking the excess paint out of my brush. And I'm again a, a Black-Eyed Susan is in the coneflower family. So if you think about a coneflower, it, the center is cone-shaped, and that's what I try to get on. And it's also kind of fuzzy, so that's why I'm stippling it on with a dry brush. So low, again, loaded in that color, and just stippling that color on. I'm going to add a little bit more on here. In order to add the highlight, I'm going to pick up just a tad more paint in my brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny little bit of warm white in my brush. Actually, that's a little bit much, so I'm going to take it off. And I'm coming here on my palette. I'm going to smash these colors together until I get a nice blend. I don't want too much white on here. And I'm going to tap that on at the top of my center. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shading to it. So I'm going to wipe my brush on a dry part of my paper towel. And I'm going to pick up more of that paint to temper the brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of 
royal purple on my brush. Once again, I'm going to smash it on my palette to blend the colors together. And that color, the, the purple, uh, royal purple, is going to go on the bottom side of that to add a, a nice shadow to it. Once I get that done, I'm cleaning my brush out. Make sure you clean it out with the dry paint in there. It's going to gunk up your brush much quicker. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to my petals. I'm using a flat shader, I'm loading as before in picking up a corner of my warm white. Blend, blend, blend on my palette. And I am going to tip it on each of my petals just for a bit of a highlight. To shade my petals, and this is why I like to get my center in first so I know where I'm going, I'm going to go back to that same mix we used to shade the centers on the daisies. The True Ochre and Purple Rain mixed together. Again, pick up paint on a corner of the brush, blend it out, and I'm adding my shading to each petal right next to the center. And as I said before, make sure you do each individual petal, even if they are right next to each other. It will give you a much nicer look, a much softer look. It will help to separate those petals as well. So all the way around the center, again with the same mix we did with the center of the daisy, the true ochre, and the purple rain mixed together. Okay, the next flowers we're going to add are the roses. This one only has a few petals. These have a couple more, and I'm going to leave it up to you, whatever you want to do. I have made myself a mix again. As I said, I wanted to combine all these colors together. I'm using mostly Bubblegum Pink by DecoArt. I pulled in a little bit of Antique White and a little bit of Wild Orchid and mixed all those colors together. You can see here is straight bubblegum pink, and here is the mixture, so the, those colors just kind of toned it down a little bit. I'm using a flat brush on my small paper mache box. I used a number eight flat brush. Again, you're wetting the brush, blotting it on the paper towel. It's very crucial that you do load this brush from the side of the puddle. Once I'm done loading, getting this brush nicely loaded, I want it to look just like it's wet. I don't want any blobs of paint on this brush. It's very important when you're doing a rosebud that it's properly loaded. And also I am pressing down as I'm loading to get paint in all the bristles. I'm coming over to my white paint, my warm white, picking up a corner and blending those colors together. Again, back and forth on the same puddle. Now it kind of gets muddied up a little bit, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more warm white on the same corner as I did before. I'm blending back and forth one time only so I don't get it all muddy going to come to my surface and you can draw yourself a small oval if you want this time I'm doing a vertical oval you don't need to put that in if you don't want to I'm going to start on the side of the oval chisel edge of the brush with my white paint up I'm going to gently pull up press down and up as I'm pulling that stroke return to the chisel edge of the brush. For my next stroke, I'm starting in the same place. I'm going to pull down this time, press down and through the stroke, get back up onto the chisel edge and connect those two strokes. You do not want to see one stroke here and then coming down and creating a hole. 
That does happen a lot of times. To avoid that, you want to remember again, up, press through, start in the same place, pull down, but don't go down too far and make sure you really press through that second stroke as you're pulling it. I usually do this stroke twice. Once my first layer is dry, I come back and do a second coat over it just to give it a little bit more coverage. I also like to add a little extra highlight by just side loading into my warm white, blending out, and adding a little bit extra highlight on the tops of each of those strokes. To do my shading on there, I'm just picking up a little bit of Purple Rain in my brush, side load, blending it out again on the same path. And I'm going to add some shading to the very bottom of that bud, as well as inside the throat. Yeah, it's really going to help that those highlights stand out. After that is dry, I'm picking up some Royal Purple in my brush. Again, blending it out on the same path. I'm going to deepen this shadow just a little bit. Now you can stop here, and I'll show you what to do with this bud if you do decide to stop here. If, however, you would like to add some strokes to side petals, I should say, to, to your flower, you can load a filbert brush into the base mix. Again, I'm going to pick up a corner or side, I should say, of white and blend it out just once on my palette. I'm going to lay my brush next to my bud and just pull a couple of side petals. Or you can use your six liner, whatever brush you're using for your comma strokes. And do the same thing, which is what I did on this flower here. I've also, after those strokes are totally dry, you can see I side-loaded into my Purple Rain and added that along the sides here to separate the petals. And then you can come back in when that's totally dry and add your Royal Purple to separate as well. We need to add a little bit of softness to this and again add some of the center to it. So I'm using again my liner brush, picking up some true ochre, and I'm going to tap some dots in the center of the flower and have them spill out onto the background. And then I'm going to pick up some warm white, or I'm sorry, antique white in my dirty brush and add just a few more and again have them spill out onto this the background. In order to finish up that bud, I'm going back to my comma stroke brush, my six liner. I'm loading it in antique green. I'm loading it flat from the side of the puddle because I want to pick up some avocado dip on one side of the brush and I'm going to blend it back and forth one time going to start at the bottom center of this bud, lay my brush down, kind of wiggle it up, pull like a wiggly comma stroke. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, wiggle it up. If you, you can leave it there or you can pull a third one up a little to the right or left of center. You can also add some calyx strokes to the bottom of the full rose if you've put that on. And I usually set my brush down and pull a couple out again from the bottom center of that flower. We need to attach stems to all of these flowers so they don't look like they're floating in midair. So I usually just start at the center bottom of each flower and you're going to pull it down into where the stems are tied by this ribbon. 
On this one, I'm stopping by this rose, pulling it down to the Black Eyed Susan, and then continuing down. So you just need to do that, stop and start, next to any flower that you need to do that. Again, pull all the stems kind of to a center area, and they will be tied by the ribbon. In order to do that, I'm using my liner brush. Remember when you're doing lines, you need extra water in the paint and brush. I'm loading it in antique green. And you can see I'm loading all the bristles, not just the tips. I'm just going to swipe it through some avocado dip. Yeah, a little bit too much. Let's pick up more green and a little more avocado dip. And again, you're going to start at the base of, of a flower and just going to pull down. And you can see that avocado dip in the brush along with the antique green gives it a little bit of a highlight. So you're going to pull them all down to a common area. Once you have all your stems in, you're going to use your filbert brush again. I'm loading it once again in the antique green, nice and flat from the side of the puddle. I'm picking up a side of avocado dip. I'm going to blend it on my palette. On either side of my stems, I'm going to add some one-stroke leaves. I'm going to set my brush, and I usually keep the light color toward the top of my design. The brush I'm sitting down next to the stem, press down, pull up onto the chisel edge. Press down, pull up onto the chisel edge. And just scatter leaves wherever you think you need to on those stems. Again, keeping the light side of the brush to the top of the design. After I have all those on and they're dry, I usually come back with my avocado dip and pick up a corner on my flat brush, blend it out, and add a little extra highlight to the highlight side of the brush or the leaf. If you think it's bright enough, you can leave it, but I think a little extra highlight makes them look really pretty and they show up better on your background. After I have that done, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to the base of the leaf with the same mix that I used for the centers of my Black Eyed Susans, the avocado plus royal purple mixed together. Again, a side load and blend and I add that shading to the base of each of those leaves, right where they attach to the stems. And that's done again on all those leaves. And I like to add some filler flowers in to the design. This kind of helps to break up the design and fill in any empty spaces that you have in the design. And for this, I just did a mix of wild orchid plus antique white mixed together. Again, I'm using my liner brush, loading in that mix. I usually start at the bottom and I'm just tapping in some dots, a little wider at the bottom, getting narrower as I move up kind of think triangle you want to get like a triangular shape but don't pull it straight up that makes it too harsh curve it a little bit and then curve in either any direction you want to once i get all of those on i pick up just a little bit of my warm white on the tip of the brush i start at the top and start tapping in and lightly work my way down more or less two-thirds of the way into the flower to add a little bit of highlight to that top edge. If you think the white warm white's a little too harsh for you, you can use antique white instead. Those also, you can attach some stems to those. Tie our stems and finish the bouquet off with a little ribbon. I'm using again my liner brush and the same mix I used for the filler flowers, the wild orchid and antique white mixed together. When I'm doing a bow, I always start in the center with my knot. 
And you can certainly do this freehand. And I'm going to add the loops that are going around the stem. And then my two loops, again, I'm starting at the knot. I'm pressing through a little bit, releasing some pressure. Running out of paint here, so let's reload. Going to start again at the same place, press through, release pressure, and connect that. We do the same thing on this side. And you can either have these drooping or standing up straight. However you want to do this bow is perfectly fine. So there are my two loops. I'm going to add my streamers. I usually think S-stroke when I do this. just think it softens it. Again, starting at my knot, press through, release pressure. And one more on this side. After my bow is dry, I usually just do my highlighting with my liner brush. I use a fairly dry. I'm going to start with antique white pick it up in my brush. I'm just going to figure out where I think my brightest highlights would be. So in this case, they're going to go on one side of my knot and the wider parts of the loops of the bow and the wider parts of my streamers. You probably want to add a little bit to this loop that goes around the stems as well. And then you can brighten this up by picking up some warm white in your brush. And I like to add that to the brighter areas. So the streamer end that's more in the front, the part of the loop that's closest to the top of my piece, and so on. You can either use the liner to do the shading, or you can side load and blend. That's entirely up to you. On this one, I did decide to do a side load and blend, and I'm using my Purple Rain again, side load, blend out. And I'm just trying to figure out where my undersides would be. So anything that's laying underneath something else, I need to shade next to my knot on all of these areas. I usually add some shading to the narrower areas here, and since your background is purple rain, you really don't need to worry about going out onto it. Same thing here. I have my loop is laying on top of my streamer end, so I'm going to shade on that streamer end next to the loop, on this loop next to the end that's laying in front of that. And then you can add a little bit of darker shadow if you want with purple, uh, I'm sorry, royal purple. Just picking it up in my dirty brush, side load and blend, and lay that in the darker areas, areas that are definitely more underneath that you want to push back, especially these areas that are going around the stems. You need to do is add a little vine along the side of the box. I did give you a pattern for this, but I'm going to show you how super simple this is to just freehand this in. I wanted my vine about in the middle of the bottom of the box. So what I do is I take my chalk pencil and I give myself a line where the lid ends. Then I'm going to use my compass. I'm adding my pencil inside the compass. And then I measure from the bottom of the box to my line. And in this case, it's more or less an inch, a little bit more than an inch. I want my vine halfway from the bottom of the box to the bottom of the lid. So I'm going to move my compass down to about a half an inch, a little bit more than a half an inch. You want to put the chalk pencil a little bit higher than the bottom edge of the metal part of the compass. I'm going to run the metal part of the compass along the bottom edge of the box and draw in your line. There's your guide for your vine. This is basically what we did with the stems and the leaves on the top of the box. So with my liner, I'm going to load in my antique green. 
swipe it through the avocado dip and I'm just going to pull a wiggly line. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, think of a vine in nature. It's not going to be perfect. After I get my wiggly line on, I'm going to use my number six filbert brush again. I'm going to pick up my antique green, sideload into the avocado dip, blend it out, and I add my leaves before I pull any other stems. I find I get a much softer look if I do it this way. So I'm just going to sit my brush down and pull a couple of leaves on either side of my vine. Again, just sit down, press, lift up. You can put them in some groups. You can do them individually, whatever looks good to you. And just add that those leaves and fill it in all the way around the edge of the box. You're going to highlight and shade just as we did with the, the other leaves. Once this is dry, you're going to add your extra highlight to the top of the leaf with avocado dip. You're going to shade with that mix of avocado plus royal purple. And then I tapped in some filler flowers again as we did before with the wild orchid and antique white mixed together and then add the highlight to it. The last thing I did on this box was I added just a little bit more interest to the edge of the lid. I first base coated it with wild purple. Then I make a mix of royal, or I'm sorry, purple rain and the Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics Metallic Gold. I wanted a little bit of glitz to this piece and that's why I added the gold. And this goes a long way so you don't need too much. It has a lot of pigment in it. I'm just going to mix those two together and make a wash out of it. See what I mean about that gold? We're going to add some more purple rain to this. That's a little bit more gold than I wanted. Again, I'm going to thin it down with water. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I'm thinning this color down with wa a lot of water. I'm going to wash it over my wild orchid. And then with a dry soft brush. I'm just going to stipple to get a little bit of texture. And there you are. A quick easy project that you can do for yourself when you need a quickie gift. I want to thank you all for painting with me. I hope you post your pictures on any of your painting groups uh, when you get some of these floral bouquets done. Please make sure you tag me so that I'm sure to see you. And I look forward to painting with you next time.